In a remote and desolate area, a starving stray dog had gone without food for three long days. The desperate canine senses led it to the scent of a dead pig nearby. The dog was about to feast on the seemingly lifeless pig when, to its surprise, the pig suddenly opened its eyes. Instead of enjoying a nice meal, the dog becomes food for the pigs. Having had its fill of the unexpected meal, the pig seemed drawn to another scent and quickly darted into an adjacent drainage tunnel. Meanwhile, a group of special forces are chasing a drug lord in the sewers, and when the piggy reveals his head, the special forces had no time to react. These piglets are not only agile, they're also incredibly strong. The special forces managed to kill the piglets but unfortunately they were all bitten. They grew increasingly frenzied, their veins bulged, and their eyes turned red as they roared towards the sky. Meanwhile, in a hidden secret research facility, Dr. Henry was conducting experiments on the pig. He injected a dose of a new drug into the pig's body, but it didn't yield the expected results. Henry thought the experiment had failed and casually returned the piglet to its cage. However, not long after, the pig unexpectedly rose to its feet and began violently ramming into the cage. With incredible force, the pig broke open the cage door and leaped onto an adjacent experimental table, then charged into another cage filled with its kind. Like a wild beast, the pig viciously attacked its fellow pigs. And the commotion caught the attention of Dr. Henry. Henry looked at the crazy piglet that kept nibbling on his kind. Not a trace of fear in his eyes but excitement instead. Dr. Henry had been commissioned by the military to create super soldiers with unparalleled strength and pain and sensitivity. He extracted aggressive genes from ants to develop a genetic serum to enhance soldiers' abilities. But most of his experiments had failed. Under pressure from his superiors, Henry, clinging to a last glimmer of hope, decided to add cocaine to the serum. Surprisingly, the experiment succeeded. Henry remembers the piglets from the previous failed experiment that were casually dumped at the US border. Now that the potion has succeeded, he wondered if those pigs had undergone some remarkable changes. Meanwhile, the group of special forces soldiers, now infected with the virus, had not turned into mindless beasts entirely. They retained some memories, including weapon usage and their assigned mission, with their heightened senses. They continued to track the fleeing drug lord, their formidable combat skills, combined with the effects of the zombie virus, transformed them into human wrecking machines, breaking through any obstacle in their path. In their insatiable hunger, they would devour any living thing they encountered, even snakes that happened to cross their way. On the other side, Henry led the soldiers to the place where he had abandoned the experimental pigs. To their bewilderment, they found only the carcass of a wolf. No pigs were in sight, just as they were puzzled. One of the soldiers noticed a pig appearing behind her. Boldly, he reached out to grab the pig. Luckily, teammates were quick enough to trap the piggy in a net. They then brought the zombie pig back to the research base. However, a sentry soldier couldn't resist the cuteness of the pig in the cage and reached out to play with it. As expected, the pig lunged and bit off the soldier's finger. The injured soldier was escorted to the lab, with the intention of giving him some first aid. But suddenly, he collapsed and started convulsing violently. Henry realized something was amiss and immediately strapped the soldier onto the operating table. At that moment, the soldier's veins were bulging, his teeth were sharp and jagged, and his pupils were like the pupils of a wild animal. Henry was astonished by the soldier's transformation and promptly ran various tests on him. To his amazement, the infected soldier's physical abilities had undergone a qualitative leap. And shockingly, he could still understand human speech. Isn't this the kind of explosive warrior Henry wants? Henry also discovered that he could control the zombie soldier using electric shocks. He placed a tennis ball into the zombie soldier's hand, instructing him to hold onto it. However, the soldier remained unmoved. Growing annoyed, Henry increased the intensity of the electric shocks, which only further enraged the zombie soldier. This completely enraged the zombie soldier, directly pinched the tennis ball in his hand, but also broke free from the body's constraints towards Henry to launch an attack. Thankfully, the guards nearby intervened just in time and shot the zombie soldier. However, this made Henry extremely angry. He had finally obtained a successful test subject, only to have it killed off like this. Helpless, Henry had no choice but to dissect the body. After dissecting the body, Henry discovered that the infected individual had grown an extra heart, which was the real reason for their revival. To validate the experiment's results, Henry asked Murdoch to bring people from the US-Mexico border to be subjects for live experiments. Unbeknownst to Henry, his experiments results had already spread rampant at the US-Mexico border. Just a few days ago, 
the group of special forces infected with the zombie virus followed the scent of the drug lord Alonso to the US-Mexico border and accidentally met a few stowaways. Though these special forces had turned into zombies, they retained their intelligence and combat abilities. With their close cooperation, this group of stowaways became a meal for them. A pregnant stowaway sits down on a rock in fear and cries out in pain. The cries soon attract a female zombie. The female zombie approached the pregnant woman, snarled for a moment, but refrained from attacking. Instead, she sniffed the woman's belly. Then, the female zombie gently caressed the pregnant woman's belly, but in the next moment, she directly sliced open her stomach. Not far from this gruesome scene, Alonzo's son Lucas was searching for a lost drone in the forest. Completely unaware of the danger closing in, a zombie-infected stowaway lunges at Lucas. Realizing the danger, Lucas ran for his life, but the relentless zombie chased after him. Just as the zombie is about to pounce on Lucas, thankfully L saves him. L fired two shots at the zombie, turning around to calm down the shocked Lucas. Unexpectedly, the zombie behind him came back to life again, and it pounced on L and took a big bite out of him. However, the wounded L, enduring the pain, plunged his knife into the zombie's throat, severing its neck. L instructed Lucas to quickly go back for help. Lucas doesn't hesitate and quickly runs towards his home, where he runs into Alonso, who was on his way. The two of them came to L, who was already dead. Lucas tearfully pleaded with Alonso to take L's body back and give him a proper burial. He couldn't bear the thought of L being left in the wilderness to be scavenged by wolves and crows. However, Alonso refused Lucas' request. He had just escaped from prison, and the search for him outside was only intensifying. Moreover, Alonso was facing the risk of his own men betraying him, with internal and external threats. Alonso felt overwhelmed and didn't want to undertake any unnecessary tasks. Lucas had to compromise when Alonso wouldn't agree. As Lucas was about to close L's eyes before leaving, something unexpected happened. L suddenly opened his eyes wide and grabbed Lucas' ankle, lifting him off the ground. Lucas screamed in terror, and Alonso quickly fired several shots at L. However, L seemed impervious to pain and walked calmly towards Alonso. In a stroke of luck, Alonso's final shot hit L's heart. Startled and shaken, Lucas desperately sought refuge in Alonso's arms. Then the two of them left the place. However, not long after they departed, L's heart started beating again. Behind the pierced heart, there was a strange black heart pulsating. Meanwhile, the special forces zombies, having feasted, suddenly detected the scent of humans nearby. In the dim underground passage, Alonzo's traitorous associate was preparing to escape through the tunnel. As he pushed open the iron door, he was startled and fired his gun when he saw a dark figure approaching. However, the figure didn't fall. Instead, it lunged at the traitor. Only then did the traitor see the other side. Actually a zombie with a horrible face. Special forces zombie smelled the smell of the traitor, issued a very strange sound of ridicule. Then the special forces zombie raised his hand. After Alonso killed L, the zombie virus brought L back to life. Memories of the good times he had with Lucas kept flashing in L's mind, disturbing his desire to feed. So, L picked up a wooden stick and stabbed it into his chest. Suddenly, L let out a roar, and the special forces zombie group nearby responded. Astonishingly, the special forces zombies used pieces of gravel to depict the layout of Alonzo's mansion on the ground. A great war is about to break out. The next morning, L descended from above and attacked two men on a mission. Fortunately, Alonzo's men were not easy targets. After L killed one man, he was shot in the head, while L was momentarily distracted. The surviving man quickly tied him up with a rope and threw him into a pickup truck, taking him back to Alonzo's base. Alonzo had never seen anything like this before a man with only half a brain still alive. He decided to put his hand into L's brain to see what was inside. At that moment, Lucas rushed over and stopped Alonso. He didn't want the loving L to be tortured like that, so Alonso had to chain L up in the yard. Lucas wanted Alonso to save L, but Alonso tried to persuade him to accept reality L was already dead, and the one tied up in the courtyard was a terrifying monster. The best option now was to put L out of his misery. Then, Alonso handed Lucas a handgun and let him make the choice himself. Lucas approached L again and threw a walkie-talkie toward him. They used to communicate using walkie-talkies often. L picked up the walkie-talkie unconsciously, recalling the warm moments he shared with Lucas. However, the desire to eat overpowered everything, and in the next moment, L crushed the walkie-talkie in his hand. He then broke free from the iron chains and lunged at Lucas. Witnessing this, 
Lucas had no choice but to shoot L, ending his suffering. Meanwhile, Murdoch's team, searching for illegal immigrants, came under attack by zombies. Only one well-trained soldier survived, which made Murdoch very uneasy. If these powerful zombies went out of control, it would be a disaster for humanity. Murdoch led his troops to the US-Mexico border to destroy all the zombies. However, when they arrived, they found no bodies, indicating that the number of zombies had increased once again. Back at Alonzo's mansion, a helicopter patrolled the area. Unexpectedly, a zombie special forces member below threw a huge stone, bringing down the helicopter. The special forces zombies had already arrived at the outskirts of the mansion, and their numbers had grown even stronger. Led by the special forces zombie commander, the illegal immigrant zombies let out a series of roars. Alonso quickly ordered his men to prepare for battle, with a signal from the zombie leader. All the zombies climbed over the walls and launched an attack. Bullets had no effect on them, and with their incredible reflexes and physical abilities, the zombies easily claimed the lives of Alonso's men. The only way to kill them was by breaking their necks. Amidst the fierce battle outside, a female zombie sneaked into the mansion, she followed the scent and found herself in the toy room, unaware of Alonso and Lucas hiding among the plush toys. After looking around, the female zombie was about to leave but suddenly turned and stared at the stuffed animals. Alonso quickly shot at her but failed to hit the vital point, and the zombie grabbed him by the neck. Alonso managed to shoot the zombie in the heart through her clothes, but because she had two hearts, she continued her attack. Despite shooting at the zombie multiple times, Alonzo's bullets had no effect, and he was knocked out of the house, witnessing his father being attacked by zombies. Lucas fires a few shots at the zombies, but the sound of the shots draws more zombies outside. Lucas turned and ran into the billiard room. The zombie followed and found Lucas hiding under the table. Lucas could only call out for his dad while shooting at the zombie, but the zombie wouldn't die. Luckily, a woman appeared in time and saved Lucas. At that moment, Alonso rushed in and hugged Lucas tightly. They had no time to spare. The house was no longer safe, and they needed to leave immediately. Under Alonzo's leadership, they rushed out of the house. However, before they had gone far, a zombie appeared in front of them. Alonso immediately confronted the zombie and engaged in a fierce struggle. He grabbed a stick and thrust it directly into the zombie's brain through its throat, killing it. After dealing with the zombie, they took refuge in a safe room. Alonso stated that the only way they could go was through the underground passage to escape. At that moment, Murdoch and his team arrived at Alonso's location. Sensing the danger, the zombie leader discreetly hid and sent out a zombie to test the firepower of the opposing forces. As expected, the zombie was shot down. The zombie leader, who retained much of his intelligence, used a communication device to contact his subordinates. Following his command, a group of zombies raised their hands and walked out of the mansion's gate. The zombie leader spoke human language and then activated the smoke grenade in his hand. As the smoke filled the air, the soldiers who had lost their sight immediately rushed forward and opened fire. Henry, fearing that his research would all die here, shouted for it to stop. When the smoke cleared, there was no trace of the zombies. On the other side, Alonso took advantage of the battle between the zombies and Murdoch's team and led the surviving few to the entrance of the underground passage. Just as Alonso was about to enter the passage, a single zombie appears and bites him on the arm. Alonso quickly used his gun to hold the zombie at bay and shot it, managing to escape into the tunnel. The lone zombie was then captured by Henry. Once inside the underground passage, Alonso concealed the fact that he had been bitten and continued moving forward with the others. However, unknown to them, a mutated pig was charging toward them from behind. Meanwhile, the special forces zombie, following Alonso's scent, initiated another round of pursuit. 